So in the previous video, we saw that we can use that heterodyne process to mix uh, a carrier frequency, and that could be our carrier frequency here, or it could have some little delta F added to it. So we could take any of these channels, carrier frequency, uh, or a carrier frequency that's been changed a little bit. Uh, we can multiply it together, right? We can take our modulated signal up here, multiply it with that uh, omega mix, that mix signal that has some intermediate amount, right? We have a mix signal where this corresponds to some channel we're interested in. This corresponds to the intermediate frequency that's down here. And this is where we're going to, what we're going to use in order to have a much better uh, frequency response and be able to recover our message without any of this interference from those uh, previous channels. So let's take a look at what the process would look like in terms of uh, components. So let's say that we uh, have an antenna and it receives a number of bands in the range omega c plus or minus delta omega, right? So we have an antenna that can pick up any one of these five bands. So the antenna, we pick up that signal and we're going to pass the signal through an RF amplifier to make that signal larger. Then we're going to have an RF filter that's tuned to the channel that you're interested in. Now, as we mentioned before, this tunable filter might not have a very good response, but this is the first step in our process. When we take this RF filter tuned to here, we're going to uh, eliminate a bunch of the different channels. So we're basically uh, going to take a filter and our filter, right, it's going to be at these higher frequencies. So let's say our filter does something like this. It, it removes uh, most of the other channels uh, you might still have a little bit of interference here and here, but the main thing you're going to get is your channel of interest. So you pass it through this uh, RF filter that's tuned to the channel you're interested in. Uh, out, out of that is going to come a modulated, your modulated message that is mostly containing just the information from the channel you're interested in. Then you will pass that, um, to, that filtered message through a mixer where you have your mixer this is our mix frequency, right? We're going to uh, take our um, message that's been modulated of interest and we're going to then pass it into this multiplier, this multiplier mixer. And by the carrier frequency of that multiplier mixer is going to be based on some intermediate frequency. When we do this, right, we're going to need some kind of uh, oscillator that generates a wave with that intermediate frequency. So this part is changing, right? Because this is, you know, you could be tuning your channel. Uh, however, this one is going to be a constant, right? This is a constant uh, frequency that you're going to be mixing with. So that's easier to generate than a changing oscillation. So if you link these two things together, uh, th as is typically done uh, in, in classical FM reception, uh, this is called ganging the capacitors together. So the ganging the capacitors together helps your filter response work um, by making sure that the RF filter and your oscillator are generating a, a similar, a similar waveform uh, or have a similar part of this waveform. So the oscillator should be able to make whatever your oscillator is. This is some part of your reception equipment that generates waves, and that should be able to make a signal that's uh, within some range omega c plus or minus delta omega. Then you will amplify the, the signal at your in intermediate frequency. So you're going to do some further amplification at that lower frequency that you've moved your message to. Because recall, right, once this comes out of here, there's going to be two parts of your message. There's going to be one at your uh, IF, and there's going to be some other term that we should be able to filter out. So then we're going to detect our message at that intermediate frequency uh, and eliminate the higher stuff. And then we're going to amplify our original message. So in typical rece uh, classical receivers, um, these two parts are typically linked together. The, the tuner or the oscillator uh, is linked together with uh, by ganging the capacitors. And that just means that the capacitors are um, used to as part of the oscillator formation. And when you turn the dial, the, uh, it moves some capacitors and it moves the one for the RF filter 
at the same time that it moves the one for your oscillator. That's what this uh, mixing idea is. And then at the very end, right when you amplify it, you get to listen to your radio. And this is basically what the, the process uh, works like in terms of the block diagram. So if we go back to our channel, uh, little channel diagram, right? Basically what our uh, equipment does, what our radio does, what, our, what this guy's radio does, is it takes any one of these channels, it uh, filters it and moves it down to an intermediate frequency where you have a much better filter. And this filter here is going to work really well to eliminate the, any adjacent channels. So this filter down here, we're gonna make, a, we're gonna spend a lot of money to make one really good intermediate uh, filter rather than having to spend a bunch of money to uh, make really, uh, really good tunable filter. So by spending the money uh, to make, it'll cost a lot less to make a really good filter at this intermediate frequency than it will to make a good tunable filter that's up there. So this whole process overall is called uh, the super heterodyne receiver process. Uh, you use a tunable filter to roughly select your band, right? You might have a little bit of channel interference when you do that. You down convert into the low frequency. Then you make factory tuned filters and amplifiers. So ones that, you know, your human dial, you don't have to use a dial or hand tune this. You have factory tuned filters that filter and amplify um, at that lower, uh, and this should say I. And this, what this is going to do is it's going to reduce cost. You need less tuning equipment. It's because you have a really good filter at that intermediate frequency. It's going to increase your performance because you aren't tuning, right? Uh, especially on old style radios, uh, the tuning was a little bit of a difficult process. Um, at lower frequencies, you're going to be able to make filters that work better. It's going to be uh, more selective than your initial RF filter and easier to implement at that low frequency. And you're going to get the uh, better suppression of the other bands when you do the filtering at the intermediate frequency. Okay, so um, in this next one, I will mention a couple other ideas in the next video.